Hello, my name is Teresa Chan. And I am Sandra Montero. And we'll be talking to you about the scholarly journey. We are so excited to have you along for this ride. Becoming involved in health professions education, research and scholarship can be an exciting time for a new scholar. In step one, we encourage you to figure out your idea. It is important that you pursue one researchable or scholarly idea at a time. The way to sort through this is to talk to people. Ask yourself what the education problem is that you are trying to solve. There may be more than one problem embedded in the situation that you're working in. Also think about what your contribution will be at the end. A written review paper, an experimental design, an observational study, or a new curriculum. Step two, read broadly and understand the conversations that are out there. Remember, when you're joining a new game, you got to learn the rules and you got to learn the players. And so what you want to do is try to read around all of the different qualitative, mixed or quantitative studies that are out there in the area. Bridge your ideas to the previous studies. Talk to your colleagues and expand your understanding of the ideas. Don't be afraid to bridge between epistemologies or disciplines too. Try to balance between classic and more current literature. Be wary of controversies where people might be disagreeing. And make sure that you organize your literature review so that you can come back to it later. You'll be wanting to return to it when you're ready to write your paper. In step three, we encourage you to think about your research team. You might be building a new team or working within a team that's been collaborating for quite some time. Think about everyone that you work well with or people that are able to push you to meet deadlines. Think about experts that you can invite to the team who can guide you. Does your team include someone with expertise in writing, study design, project management? Perhaps you need to invite someone who has a specific insight into the education problem you're trying to solve. If a publication is at the end of this scholarly journey, consider discussing the authorship order with your research team now. Doing this planning ahead of time can save some awkward conversations later. Step four, develop your study protocol. If you're doing an empiric study, you'll want to write a protocol. If you're not, then you can think about skipping this phase. That being said, it's probably good to have a standard rules of operation for your team so that you can make sure that everything makes sense. A study protocol outlines your methods that you're going to use and also helps you anticipate any problems that you can think about ahead of time and is often an important of the ethics review board process so that you can get institutional endorsement for your project. Your scholarly journey is really picking up now as you ramp up for data collection in step five. Once you've completed writing out your study design and have a very clear study protocol, this needs to be submitted to your local ethics review board. Remember also to conduct your own little pilot test. Invite the members of your research team to act as participants. Stopping to conduct this little pilot test will ensure that you've smoothed out the logistics and potentially also ensure some face and content validity of your study materials. If you're really ambitious, you may use this process and the protocol that you've developed to submit a grant application to further your research endeavors. Step six, data analysis. Now, hopefully on your team, you have someone who's more expert than you at the analysis part, especially when you're starting out, this can be really important. Remember to involve your analyst early. Many of them will want to be involved right from the get-go in the study protocol part. They can help you write that and also the analysis section there. If you're doing your thesis, you will probably want to involve your supervisors in this manner, although you'll be the one taking the lead. As you get more senior, you might be the person that's the chief analyst for your project, which is pretty exciting as well. Remember that being organized, regardless of whether your data is qualitative or quantitative, is going to be a lifesaver. Here we are at step seven. You've traveled really far with your research team along this scholarly journey. 
but it is difficult to quantify at this point whether you are almost at the end or still just beginning. The writing stage of any scholarly project can be really easy or it's where everything falls apart. That's because it all depends on how the study went. Were your hypotheses correct? Did the study run smoothly? Did all members of the research team stay engaged? At this step, we'd like to remind you to take stock and review the story that you've been working on, all the way from the inspiring education problem you started with to the best way to interpret the results you have. Then place the team member with project management skills in charge and start writing the components of your manuscript. If this is a new research collaboration, remind everyone of the ICMJE authorship guidelines so everyone is clear on expectations and can approve the authorship order again. Step eight, putting it all together. You wanna to make sure that your paper flows, that your results and analysis definitely fit within the conversation. You wanna make sure that you've set up your problem, gap and hook so that you can actually link that introduction to the actual methods and then to the analysis and the results. In your discussion, you wanna make sure that you're flowing all of that into a natural progression where you're going to be discussing the recent literature. Based on the audience that you want to appeal to or speak to, you wanna pick your target journal. And then you wanna make sure of a few other journals that are gonna be your backups when you're trying to think through what you're going to do next. Finally, you wanna think about whether or not there are any fees associated. Some people may have grants that can help fund a paper to be published. Others may find that you need to go towards journals that do not require an author processing charge. When selecting your journal of choice, all of these are factors that you wanna think about. Congratulations, you've made it to step nine and submitted your manuscript. This can feel strange. You've certainly been working on this project for quite some time. There's been feelings of doubt to overcome, making sure that all your references are formatted exactly as the journal requires. But at this point, you should certainly be proud of your accomplishment. Now that that's over, you should realize that only 10 to 20% of all submissions are accepted in journals for publication. Of that small amount, the majority are invited to revise and resubmit. The requested revisions may be quite extensive. If you find yourself in this position, get that project manager back on task, create a schedule and get to work. Use the reviewer's comments to improve your paper. If the manuscript falls in that majority and is actually rejected from the journal, but perhaps was lucky enough to receive some useful comments, recommendations from the reviewers or editor, don't waste that advice. Take a deep breath, pause, consider everything that they've said and improve your paper and then move it on to submit to another journal. You may even consider the expedited review options that some journals offer and take advantage of your first submission process. Now step 10, last but not least, you wanna make sure you share your success. A couple of ways you can share your success is going to a conference or share it on social media, such as Twitter or Facebook, or you can engage in other scholarly opportunities to get the word out about your project. Sometimes you wanna give a talk at a nearby university or run a workshop at a national conference. All of these are ways to get the word out about your work. But careful, make sure you review whether or not you can share the publications openly. Look at the copyright and embargo rules that are associated with your journal. In fact, some of the journals have their own vehicles by which you can share about your article. So whether that's a blog like Academic Medicine has, or a podcast like some journals have like Medical Education, these are avenues that you can actually share about your content um, if invited to do so. Another modern trend would be to create an infographic to share on social media, whether that's Twitter, TikTok, or Instagram, so that people can understand more about your article. Okay, so that's it. We hope that you've enjoyed this tour through the scholarly journey. Welcome to the world of scholarship. We're really excited to have you here. And one thing that we wanted to remind you is that this is just the beginning, even though it's the end of our video, you definitely can cycle back to the beginning and rinse and repeat. 
As a successful scholar, you may go through this scholarly journey hundreds of times over your career. So good luck, and we'll see you on the other side.